welcome everyone. Thanks very much for joining us today. Not the greatest topic to be talking about. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of changes and, and um, everything going on, I guess, in the economy. We just thought it was quite relevant to, to maybe touch on some of these things because, unfortunately, there will be some people out there that are facing this situation, um, and I am hearing it a bit more and more, uh, seeing quite a bit, uh, especially with the larger companies coming into the end of financial year. We've heard quite a bit with the, some of the larger companies um, doing their provision for redundancies and about to, to look at that. So not a great topic to be talking about, but we hope this webinar will give you some guidance um, and to uh, to know what to maybe ask or discuss, et cetera. Um, and obviously, you know, we'll always be here. So today, just to go through also um, important information, uh, just the fine print, obviously this is general advice. It's not specific to your personal situation. So if you do find yourself in this situation, please do reach out and we will, um, we will assist you the best we can in that um, and assist you going through. Uh, I do know um, a number of you on, um, actually we've got a few employers on today, which is good to see um, uh, how you can then also manage that for your um, your team members if you are having to be faced with with letting some go. But so um, I do know some of you from today. Um, I don't know some of you, um, but for those who are not aware, so I'm an accountant, financial advisor, and also broker. Um, I set up Smart Business Solutions 15, uh, 16 years ago now, and um, uh, we actually, I'm quite an active investor as well. I love looking at properties, um, SMSF, any super strategies, um, and, and kind of grabbing all of the things that I know about accounting, tax, financial advice, and mortgage broker, um, and putting that into my own situation. But that's that, you know, one of our values is practice what you preach, and, and that's what I like to do with clients as well. Um, so joining me today um, is Bianca Carroll. So Bianca actually started as a vet surgical nurse. Um, things changed on that front started in admin and fast forward a number of years later and she has her master's in financial planning. Um, she was also emerging advisor of the year and um, is going to take us through today's um, situation uh, on, on redundancy. She's also quite an active pro uh, property investor herself. So what are we going to cover today? Um, what is a redundancy? What um, What is your redundancy package? You know, what does that um, tend to look like? Uh, there is in in some situations there are some there is some ability to negotiate and things like that so just what is that how does it get taxed because when they actually tell you what you're going to get and you see the the money that ends up in your your hand um there is some tax aspects on that you know what happens next and then how can we help you maybe with that so just to get a bit of framework around what does it mean if you were to um, receive a redundancy and how can you make sure that this situation can actually be, um, you know, give you the best possible outcome from that? So I'm going to pass you over now to Bianca um, and she'll start going through some of the details behind that. Thank you, Shannon, for that amazing introduction. <laughs> um, and thank you for joining us today. So it's very important to understand um, Redundancy is not personal. Um, it doesn't reflect your skills, your ability, your achievements, um, or your work ethic. Um, but it is almost always based on economic reasons. So in the past, workers could expect to have a job for life. Um, but this is really the case um, for us in the 21st century, for some of us. Um, in fact, you know, more than one in 50 Australians will be made redundant at some point in their working lives. Um, generally due to business downsizing or closure, um, increased casualisation of the workforces and advances in technology. So you might not feel this way right now, but redundancy um, could actually provide you with the money and the opportunity to take a new path um, and start heading in the direction that you've always wanted to go in. So today we're going to look at um, how to turn this life event into a major opportunity for you. So first, um, need to know what sort of redundant, redundancy package you can expect. So you're entitled to receive a genuine redundancy payment um, if you're dismissed before reaching age pension qualifying age. Um, you have to leave your job because the duties you perform are no longer required at the location where you work um, or if there's no arrangement for future employment made um, on your behalf by your or by your employer um, or if the amount paid is considered reasonable on an arm's length basis, that is um, when there's no connection between the two parties involved. Um, the amount must exceed the amount um, that could reasonably be expected to be received upon voluntary termination. 
Um, so the age-based limit of um, 65 years old has changed um, to the aged pension age, and the aged pension age will depend um, upon the year that you were born. So the general redundancy, um, genuine redundancy payment um, is just one part of your total redundancy package. So what's included in your redundancy package? So as we've seen, if you're under age pension age and your job is no longer available, you may receive a genuine redundancy payment, which consists of a tax-free amount and an employment termination payment, also known as ETP. And the amount of your redundancy payments will depend on your income and length of employment. Um, your workplace agreement and the award your role falls under may also be applicable, as well as the laws um, that are in place. You may also be entitled to any unused annual leave um, and long service leave. And while the tax-free component is always exempt from tax, your ETP or employment termination payment um, and leave may be taxed in different ways. And we'll look at that in a moment. So remember that this is a complex area where financial advice can be invaluable in ensuring that you don't pay unnecessary tax. But first, let's have a look at how much your tax-free amount is. Sorry. Let's have a look at how redundancy is taxed. Sorry. Just skip the slide there. So there is a specific formula for calculating the tax-free part of your genuine redundancy payment. There is a base amount of $10,989 plus a further amount of $5,496 um, for every year that you worked for your employer. So the base amount and the further amount are indexed each year in line with the average weekly ordinary time earnings or AWOTI. Um, so the formula for the current financial year is calculated um, on the screen here. So we have the $10,989 plus the $5,496 times by the completed years of service. So for example, if you've worked for a company for 10 years, the tax-free amount of your redundancy um, would then be the $10,989 plus $5,496 times 10 years, equaling $65,949. So any payment above this tax-free amount is your employment termination payment. So what is an employment termination payment or ETP? So an ETP can include general redundancy payments in excess of the tax-free amount, as I just discussed, um, un, un, unused rostered days off, um, payments in lieu of notice, unused sick leave um, if it's not part of the tax-free amount, um, a gratuity or golden handshake, um, compensation for loss of job or compensation for, loss, um, for wrongful dismissal. So if it is paid within 12 months of the termination of employment. It is also important to know what is not um, an ETP. So general redundancy payments within the tax-free amount, um, unused annual leave and or leave loading, unused long service leave, um, salary, wages and allowances owing to you for work that you've already done or leave that you've already taken, compensation for personal injury, payment for, uh, for restraint of trade, um, an advance or, or loan, super benefits and deemed dividends. So let's have a look now at how this is taxed. So the first thing to know is that employment termination payments have a tax-free and taxable component. So the tax-free component, if you've had an employment service period which commenced on or before the 30th of June 1983, um, then the fraction of your ETP related to that service period will be tax-free. It also may include an invalid, invalidity, invalidity, oh, I have problems with that, invalidity, segment, which applies um, if you've been made redundant because you are suffering from a permanent invalidity. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, these amounts um, are calculated um, at the time the ETP is paid. So as the name suggests, the tax-free component is not subject to tax. It is also important to understand that um, this, is a, this is separate to the tax-free amount that we've just calculated, which is not part of your ETP. So if we have a look at the taxable component, um, so this is the ETP amount less the tax-free component. Um, basically, what is, whatever is left over once we've taken out the tax-free component. 
So it is subject to tax, um, depending on factors such as the age of the employee, um, the amount of the component and the circumstances in which it is being paid. The concessional tax rate is 15% plus the Medicare levy. And if you've reached your preservation age, um, if you reach a preservation age and uh, or 30% plus the Medicare levy if you haven't um, reached your preservation age up to the relevant cap. And then amounts um, above the cap are taxed at 45% plus the Medicare levy. So understanding the um, tax cap, so depending on the type of um, in employment termination payment, um, there may be two different caps to apply um, called the ETP cap and the whole of income cap. So the ETP cap applies to excluded payments, which are genuine redundancy and early retirement scheme payments that exceed the tax-free limit. Um, only, amount, only the amount above the limit is subject to the cap. Um, in validity payments, um, only the amount not included in the tax-free component is subject to the cap and compensation payments for personal injury, unfair dismissal, harassment or discrimination, um, and death benefit ETPs. So the ETP cap is indexed each year, um, and it is currently $235,000 in the current financial year, but it is reduced by any other payments um, of this type received in the same year for the same termination. But there is also the non-excluded payments and they're including golden handshakes, non-genuine redundancy payments, severance pays, payments in lieu of notice, gratuities, unused sick leave or rusted days off. And for these, the smaller of the ETP cap or whole income cap applies. And the whole income cap is $180,000 in the current financial year, but is reduced by other taxable income payments you receive in the same year, including salary and wages. So unless there are multiple payments to the employee for the same termination, the whole of income cap will generally be um, the lesser amount um, and will be applied to these payments. And the reason for these two types of caps is that um, you don't use up all of your ETP cap um, or non-excluded payments, so you can take advantage of a lower tax rate on these. Uh, if you receive a payment that is partially excluded um, and partially non-excluded, they'll be treated as two separate payments um, with the excluded payment um, treated as being received first. So the same tax rates apply for both uh, excluded and non-excluded payments um, and depend on your age. And because the cap amounts are different, um, it affects the total amount you are liable to pay in tax. So for excluded payments on the first $235,000, you'll be taxed at 30% plus the 2% Medicare levy if you're under preservation age, and 15% tax plus the 2% Medicare levy if you've received, if you've reached your preservation age. Um, unless that cap has been reduced by payments received in the same year um, or for the same termination. And the remainder of your taxable component um, will be taxed at 45%. Um, plus the 2% Medicare levy. So that is anything above the $235,000 cap. So for non-excluded payments, um, remember that the cap is the lower of your ETP cap or the whole of income cap. Um, so the maximum this cap um, will be is $180,000. So that amount will also be taxed at 30% plus the 2% Medicare levy if you're under preservation age and 15% tax plus the 2% Medicare levy if you've reached preservation age. And the remainder will be taxed at the 45% plus 2% Medicare levy. So as you can see, these rules are very complex, so it's definitely worth getting tax advice um, when you're working out how to receive your employment termination payments. The tax is also payable on your annual leave and long service leave. So for your annual um, annual service leave um, and long service leave um, loading, uh, sorry, annual leave and annual leave loading um, with regards to termination because of genuine redundancy, invalid, invalidity <laughs> or early retirement scheme, um, a maximum of 30% tax rate plus the 2% Medicare levy will apply. Um, for your annual service leave and leave loading with regards to the um, normal termination, so that 
voluntary resignation, um, employment terminated due to inefficiency or retirement. So the pre um, 18th of August 1993 um, will be a maximum of 30% tax rate plus a 2% Medicare levy and post um, that date um, a tax at marginal tax rate. The tax treatment of unused long service leave received um, upon genuine redundancy um, depends on when it was accrued. So if it was accrued before the 16th of August um, 1978, 5% of the total assessable portion um, will be taxed at your marginal tax rate plus the Medicare levy. If it was accrued after the 16th of August 1978, 100% of the assessable portion will be taxed at 30% plus the Medicare levy. So it's also, also worth noting that um, any unpaid wages are taxed at normal tax rates, so that is your marginal tax rate. Which brings us to the next question, so what is next? So first up, um, you need to take care of your super, especially um, if it's an employer super, uh, employer sponsored super fund. So in that case, you may need to switch plans after leaving your job. And depending on the fund, you may be automatically transferred to a personal plan by the super fund. Uh, personal accounts um, often have higher fees than the employer sponsored fund. So check the investment option to make, make sure that it still suits your needs um, once you have transferred over. Um, and if you uh, already have another super account, you could also then roll over that balance possibly into that other super account and consolidate the super and save on fees in that way. You do need to be careful um, and consider if you do have any insurance sitting um, in your existing super fund, because um, you'll need to find out the level of cover that you have there and whether you um, can retain that in a way or whether you need to um, apply for some more insurance elsewhere. And of course, um, if you do need a financial advisor can always help with superannuation and insurance needs. It can be a very complex area as well. So next you need to decide um, what to do with your redundancy payout. So when you leave your job, um, you may be able to access some or all of your super depending on your age and whether you satisfy a condition of release. So generally speaking, you can only withdraw your super once you reach your preservation age and permanently retire from the workforce. Um, withdrawals are tax-free once you reach age 60. Um, however, there will be implications for your retirement as well as um, for your retirement, um, as well as your Centrelink entitlements if you do have those. So before you decide to assess your super, it is best to speak to um, a professional. So one of the hardest choices can be deciding what to do with your redundancy payments. Um, and while it is tempting to splurge it all <laughs> um, when you receive a large sum of money, um, you need to be careful about how you spend that money um, until you're earning a regular income again or until you have organised your retirement if that's what you are going to be doing. So it is a good idea um, to speak to a financial advisor about the best option for your individual financial situation because we are all different. Um, we all have different needs and financial um, goals. Um, so taking into account, you know, the size of the, the payment that you receive, your job prospects, um, regular expenses that you would need to keep up with and your long-term goals. So there are three main ways that you can use your payout. Um, you could make lifestyle changes. You might want to put some money towards a holiday or home renovations. Um, you might also decide that that is a good time to retire. Um, you may pay off your debt, so a redundancy payout um, can be a great opportunity to make um, inroads into your home loan and other debts like credit cards and personal loans. And it's important to keep some money aside for everyday expenses too before you start working again. If your home loan does have a um, mortgage offset account, um, you could consider putting a redundancy payment um, into that offset account so you can reduce the amount of interest that you're paying on your home loan, but you also have the um, flexibility of having access to that money if you do need it. Um, saving for the future, so your payout um, can be a valuable tool to creating, you know, the sort of lifestyle that you would want in the future. So you might consider building an investment portfolio, um, setting up a trust fund for your children. You may also want to consider contributing part of your payment to your super um, to give your retirement savings a major boost. 
So let's have um, a quick look at the differences between investing in size and investing outside of super. So probably the biggest advantage of using your super to save for retirement is the tax effectiveness. So your super may be taxed in three stages. So contribution. So if you're investing in super from your pre-tax salary, um, for example, through salary sacrifice, you will generally um, pay a contribution tax of 15%. And for most people, this is likely to be lower um, than the marginal tax rate that you pay. Personal contributions um, made from your after-tax salary are classified as non-concessional contributions and you do not pay tax on these. However, there are caps on how much you can contribute um, for both concessional and non-concessional contributions. And if you do exceed these, you may have to pay additional tax. So investment earnings, um, so these can be taxed um, up to the maximum um, rate of 15%, although this can also be reduced by franking credits, tax deductions and other offsets. So compare this to investment earnings outside of super, which can be taxed up to the highest marginal tax rate of 47%, including the Medicare levy. Um, benefits, the amount of tax that you pay on your benefits um, when you retire will depend on factors such as your age, um, whether you choose to receive your benefit as a lump sum um, or roll it into an income stream. Um, benefits are generally tax-free if you are aged 60 and over. So as well as um, choosing how to invest your payouts, you know, there may be some other decisions that you may need to make as well. So a budget, um, that is telling you, telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. <laughs> So this is um, the definition of a personal budget. Um, it's a very useful definition because it makes three important distinctions. Um, firstly, this is a personal budget. Its purpose and form is quite different to a budget you create for your business. Secondly, your personal budget um, is not just something you create and then you know tuck into a bottom drawer and forget about. It's an actionable plan that if you follow it, um, will help you to, to achieve your financial and also lifestyle goals. Uh, and then lastly, your personal budget um, is forward facing for a 12 month period and broken down into months. So it allocates your future um, personal income, including um, salaries, drawings, dividends from a business, um, personal expenses, savings, investments, um, and the reduction of debt, personal debt as well. So put really simply, a personal budget um, is a plan that lays out how you will spend and save your money. So there are many benefits of having a personal budget. Um, and some of these are obvious um, and are financially focused, and others are focused on reducing stress and improving um, communication with your significant others and sometimes just giving you peace of mind. <laughs> um, the value um, in having more control over your financial future, um, you know, it cannot be underestimated. So focusing on your personal budget um, brings you focus on something that you can really have control over. Personal budgeting um, helps you focus on your money, money goals um, and creates a better awareness of where your money is actually going. So um, a common, a common, <laughs> comment um, that we get from clients um, when they look at their annual accounts and see their personal drawings figure is, you know, we can't possibly have spent that much money in a year. Where is it all gone? <laughs> um, so don't worry. Um, it is common. You're in good company. Um, so this is a sure sign that, you know, by spending, you know, an hour each month drilling down into your personal spending, you'll have a greater awareness of where your money is actually going. And, you know, you'll start thinking about where it's going before it goes. <laughs> Having money goals um, and an awareness of how much money you are spending and on what um, creates better money habits, so which in turn helps you manage your debt levels, and this enables you to achieve your wealth goals too. So a personal budget um, also acts as an er early warning system because you can anticipate those upcoming costs. So having the budget's important um, in regards to communication with your spouse and other loved ones. Um, according to the Marriage Guidance Ex Experts Financial Conference, is the top three most um, commonly argued about topics. <laughs> so um, at the end of the day, if you have a budget um, and you use it um, as one of your wealth creation tools, you'll end up with um, hopefully more money and less conflict and less stress.
So here are the top seven reasons why so many of us don't have a personal budget. Um, setting up your annual personal budget and reviewing your progress each month um, is a time consuming process. Uh, there are some simple things that you can do to make things easier on yourself. Um, make sure you have all your personal spending um, coming from one bank account or one credit card. Um, try not to pay personal expenses out of a um, business account. That way you'll only have one spending um, source that you'll have to track. Secondly, um, get a hold of a simple budget template to work out, um, you know, setting up or work out setting up one. We have one available, a really good one on our website. Um, you can have a look there, it's free to download and we can also assist you with working through it if you do need that. Um, alternatively, um, you know, an idea you could subscribe to a budgeting app. Um, there are a lot on the market. <laughs> um, and you could go one step further um, and see your financial advisor and have a look at your whole financial situation and goals. So price can be um, an issue for some of us, um, but don't let your financial future be harmed um, because of your preconceived notion um, about who needs you know, a spending plan or a budget. We all do. Um, so totally understand um, you know, watching a movie sounds more fun than doing a budget, but once you've done it and you set it, um, it'll only take a little bit of time each month to update it and um, you know, the benefits outweigh that time spent. So redundancy can be viewed um, as an opportunity for a reset, um, a deep dive into your finances, your financial and personal goals, and what steps um, you need to take to achieve those goals. And depending on your payout amount, um, redundancy may offer the gift of time and a financial injection to help you design a, a better, more astute approach with your finances. So as we did um, cover briefly just before, um, the first step in personal budgeting is to actually set up your 12 month personal budget with all of your income and all of your expenses. Um, and it is, it is best to do it month by month. Um, so firstly, um, the best way is to enter all of your monthly income. So that could be coming from you know, um, investment income, uh, employment income, um, business income and then popping in all of your expenses you know all of your food and bills and medical lifestyle and housing and that will give you a really good understanding of your overall income and overall expenses giving you a better idea so also be prepared to have a shop in some categories as well <laughs> um it would yeah it would um if you would prefer you know um to budget on a forward-facing basis, you know, be also sure to include the big ticket items. You know, don't forget those things like the rates and insurances and school fees, things like that. And also don't forget to include holidays. <laughs> so when budgeting um, your debt repayments, you know, this is an opportunity to plan for increases or decreases if necessary, according to the cash surplus um, and your wealth creation plan. So if you're thinking about ways to save on living expenses, um, it might be worthwhile to shop around for a better home loan deal. Um, when is the best time to re refinance? You know, it seems like every bill um, is, is going up um, as inflation hits. Um, everything from, you know, how long you can spend in the shower to how much, you know, groceries you put in a trolley now so the, and, and also including the cost of housing. So, you know, which is often the largest expense for, for people. Um, so many homeowners um, and investing investors are um, finding that their home loan repayments are changing um, and those on the variable interest rates you know, are being impacted uh, greatly. Um, so that has seen some lenders um, raise interest rates on their variable loans. As for those with the fixed rate mortgages, um, you know, they could be or they already have um, you know, facing de decision about what to do um, when their fixed rate ends and then they will go on to a variable rate. So if you haven't let, yet um, looked at um, refinancing, um, even if you're you know, not looking down the face of redundancy, you know, now's a great time to assess your loans and see if you can save. It's always a great time to have a look to see if you can save money. Um, you know, even $20 a week saving you know, um, will total more than $1,000 a year, and it's better in your pocket than anyone else's. 
So the answer, you know, when is the best time to refinance? Um, if your financial situation can accommodate it anytime soon is a good time um, to take a look at the home loan market and see what deals are available. So what are the benefits um, of an offset account? So an offset account um, is one of the most useful features that a home loan can have, um, and we'll go through some of the benefits now. So it works like an accessible um, savings account. So an offset account is, um, you know, like an everyday bank account, um, but having the money sitting in that type of account means that you can access it, you have the flexibility of being able to access it when you would like to. Um, the fees, um, you pay for the account um, and transactions may also be lower. It helps you reduce your interest costs on your home loan. So if you have more money in your offset account, the less you have to pay on your mortgage, the funds are accounted daily against your home loan balance. It allows you to pay your home loan sooner. So um, given the savings that you have um, from having an offset, you'll be able to pay off your home loan sooner. And this does depend, of course, on how much you have sitting in your offset account. You can take um, advantage of a tax deduction. Um, if you are claiming a tax deduction on the interest, um, financial advisors, you know, um, can use, you know, um, this as a method, um, you know, using offset accounts for tax purposes um, and accountants may also um, uh, suggest that you put uh, money in offset account um, to save on the interest. So I would now like to welcome Shannon back to go through um, a review of our key points from today. Yeah. So looking at um, taking back control, what do you do when you're faced with this situation? How are you going to, um, to take back control in what is often beyond your control um, at that time? So it is, an, it is a good opportunity to reassess your career plans. Is this what you want to do? Do you want to change roles? Um, sometimes this can be a blessing in disguise. It may not seem like it at the time, but sometimes it um, can. Um, and we've seen a number of people then actually decide to start their own business and take a bit more control from that perspective. You know, work out what you need um, to take these next steps. Um, is it, uh, do you need, you know, registering a business? Is there more study involved? Um, and then also, most importantly, deciding what you what to do with the payout you might receive, depending on the company that um, you are with, depending on how long you were with them. Sometimes these payouts can be quite a sizable amount. So making sure that you actually get the advice and do something with that uh, to really set yourself up for the future and, you know, take care of your super, have a look, what should you be doing with that? And then based on receiving this, depending on your age as well, make a retirement plan um, around it so that you're not waiting till the last minute. But definitely um, look at seeking professional advice um, around that. Some of the other things to consider as well, um, you know, potentially investing in professional development or training. If you've been at a company for a long time, uh, you've probably had a lot of training at the company, but are there new things that are needed? Um, you know, if you're going to look at making this uh, career change or starting a business, what, what else do you need on that side? Um, depending on the timing at the moment, you may need to access Centrelink um, benefits potentially, but it also could be that uh, depending on the size of the redundancy you've received, um, you may not be eligible yet. Um, and you also, given the labour market, you may find something very um very quickly. We do have a number of people that actually decide, um, actually, you know what, I'm a few months out or I'm a year out of retirement. I'm not changing jobs. I'm going to actually retire now. You know, what does that look like, especially if you are you at the age of 60 where you can access your super? If you can't, that's where we have a look and see what we can do with the payment that you've received. And then others, other situations, I've seen people actually then switch to part-time. So, you know, redundancy is not a um, not an easy situation. Um, it's you know actually uh, my husband was made redundant in the GFC, um, and it can be you know quite a, a tough situation to actually work out you know what it is that you want to do. Um, it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise, uh, but sometimes you don't feel like that at the time. So it's really important to kind of take that time to really think, okay, what can I do with this situation, and how can I make this situation? a better outcome and what what other things. So, you know, as Bianca's talked about today, 
you know, track your spending and try and identify the leaks. Um, I think a lot of us should be doing that now with or without a redundancy, given the way the market is going at the moment and just the cost of living that's gone up. Create a different strategy for business and personal budgeting and future planning and, you know, and start to look at and know and monitor your equity. How much am I actually worth? What does that mean when I get to retirement? What does that mean that I'm going to be able to retire on? Uh, you know, what can I draw down pension from? Um, you know, go and look at negotiating a better deal with a lot of your providers, whether it's your, you know, electricity, whether it's your health insurance, things like that. And look at cancel those things that you don't need. So, you know, really reevaluate, re review and reset monthly and get yourself back on top from a budgeting perspective. And sometimes using these types of situations as as that catalyst because life just gets busy and you just keep doing what you're doing. Um, if you need, get some independent accountability, someone to help, you know, keep you on track. And then I guess, you know, try and look at the positive on it. I know it's not going to be a positive situation, but uh, trying to see, well, this has happened. What can I do to, to go forward? So um, how can a financial advisor help me? We've got a lot of videos also online that you can watch. You can rewatch this one as well, but we do have a personal budget one. We've got some others. But if you want someone to sit down with you and help you set financial and lifestyle goals, um, we can actually do that with you. I guess what we often like financially modeling out right out through to, you know, retirement and then life expectancy. What does that look like? Now, I know a lot of things change along the way, but just something to give you a bit of clarity on it and how best um, to use that lump sum. Uh, looking at insurance benefits, um, help you plan a comfortable retirement and then navigate some of the options for the payout just to make sure you get the best um, situation. You know, if you're going to have a big tax bill, is there an opportunity for us to contribute more to super that would help minimise that, knowing that maybe you can access it in two to three years' time? So that kind of planning can really add a lot of dollars to your bottom line as well. Um, look at building a tailored investment portfolio and really achieve financial security. And I think the biggest thing that we get back from our clients is where they just say, you just give me peace of mind. You know, um, I know where things are at. So um, yeah, that's something that uh, we can help you with. So we do have our personal budget template that is free. Um, feel free to email us. We can send that to you. It is on our website with the video to go with it to teach you how to use it. Um, if you want a personal budget review and financial coaching session, um, $600 plus GST, we can sit down and go through your personal budget. But if you do want financial advice, which is going to that full level, that's from 4,000 plus GST. But what we always find is we end up more than paying for ourselves, of course, um, with the value of the advice. So I'm going to put it out to questions. I haven't seen any questions come through. Maybe we've answered all the questions. Um, I understand it is one of those topics, and I know that we've done this um, Probably only half the people that registered did turn up um, uh, for the session. I know we've had that with some other topics that are also a bit um, uh, like this as well, that a lot of people do like to go to our YouTube um, channel. It's not something we all want to discuss a lot of these and, and watch the videos in person. So if um, if you're watching this as a repeat um, or from our YouTube channel and you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. But um, thanks, everyone, for turning up today. And I hope you um, got a lot out of it in what's going to you know be a challenging time. Hopefully this helped give you some clarity. Um, it is worth going and getting some advice to also make sure the calculations have been done correctly because we have checked a redundancy calculation that was done by a local government agency, a government body, um, and it was wrong. And um, uh, so our client did end up with um, quite a bit of extra money. It had been calculated incorrectly. So it is always worth getting an accountant in that situation to have a second set of eyes over making sure the calculation should, is uh, done correctly. Thanks very much for joining us and we'll hopefully see you all at our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you.